Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation and today on Habitat Hints we're going to talk about removing cedars and why it's important to do so and what it can do and help the habitat in that area. I'm going to be joined by MDC's Seth Berrios and he's going to tell us all we need to know about the importance of removing cedar. All right, Seth, so we're talking cedars, you know, and why is it so important and why should we consider removing those cedars? Yeah, Lucas, great question. You know, here in Missouri, uh, we are blessed with uh, heavy in calcium soils. Limestone is our base rock. Um, and one of those species that really loves uh, calcium is our cedar trees. Cedar trees are native, um, but historically cedar trees grew and, and only grew on our glades and our cliff areas where they were uh, uh, kept away from fire. Fire uh, and cedar do not go well together. Uh, they burn very well. However, uh, when we bring, when we remove fire from the equation or remove from pat, you know uh, active grazing, uh, cedar trees can quickly invade and take over fields. Since they are very fast growing species, they can grow up quickly and they begin to shade out all of our native species. Take for example right here, because of the heavy shade, we have a lot of moss. We have some uh, species such as your dicantheliums or maybe some sedges. You, we got some uh, uh, broadleaves growing in here, but these species are not um, going to provide a lot of forage for our wildlife. Certainly there's no cover in here. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain, there's cover from our standpoint, from our eyes, you know, we, we can uh, cannot see deer, but if you get down around 18 inches, um, around the height of a uh, coyote or a bobcat, you can see all the way underneath of all these cedar trees and you can see fawns or turkey nests, you know, or those poults. And so from a predator standpoint, it, this is a win-win situation. And so let's take a walk out here and look at what ha we can do if we remove cedars um, from the landscape. And now oh, wow. this can be done with, uh, on in old fields, this can be done in our glades, but we want to remove them. These cedar trees here were removed in uh, the, this past winter, and then look at the response. You may not know all these species right out of the gates, but here we have rough blazing star, which would be a beautiful purple plant species. We have partridge pea. We have slender lespedeza. We have some uh, native petunia and numerous others. We have some coneflowers growing. Or, or excuse me, that's not a coneflower. That is a rough blazy star. But um, these species are in the seed bank and ready to grow, but they've been suppressed by the cedar trees. What we want to do is come in and cut the cedars. Luckily for us, cedars, when you cut them, they don't regrow from the uh, stump, so you don't have to use any chemical. When you get cut, uh, cut these trees and you get them moved off site, it's easy to come back in when there's a skiff of snow or maybe a light rain, and you can burn up those cedar trees when they're in a pile. Uh, in this instance, the farmer has pushed them off. Uh, they will be looking to cut trees coming from the other way and will burn these in rows. What that does is that also keeps the intense heat off the majority of this uh, area and prevents any sterilization of the soil. But this is something that can be done all across Missouri. Just removing some of that overstory, bringing fire back in, bringing the sunlight back in, and we can help uh, to restore some of our native species that are still laying dormant in the seed bank even after 80 to 100 years. So I think, I mean, what the cool thing about this is, Seth, what I'm seeing is we started out in an area where it's so thick, you can, we can barely see, and we think it's thick, but we get down there, like you said, like a coyote or, or any type of predator gets down there, they can see real well. But now, you, this past winter, all these cedars right here in this area were cut, but look at the habitat and the growth happening here in just less than a year. I mean, this just, this is a huge statement. So we have those. We have those cedars that are basically taking away all the nutrients from the soil and not giving the opportunity for these aw the awesome uh, others to grow. I mean, this just blows my mind. There's just, just not even a year, and this is what it looks like from actually being cut. This is what successful management can do, removing some of those. And, and it just doesn't, and you don't have to take all the all cedars out of the equation. 
but take enough to make a difference. Um, how many do you take? You take enough of what you can get and what you can do. Um, but understand that at this, that the, that the seed, that the forage that's in here for our wildlife is just incredible. Um, the opportunities exist out there. You just have to go out and get it done. Awesome, thank you very much, Seth. And if you're wanting to take on a project like this and you kind of don't know where to start, if you have a lot of questions, I encourage you to go to our website at mdc.mo.gov and search, you know, cedar removal or search on, click on that contact and find your local private lands conservationist in your area and send them an email or give them a call and they will definitely be willing to help you out and figure something out and put a plan together. Thanks again for this day. Thanks for tuning in. You'll have a great rest of the day.